One of the things that has always fascinating me is the idea of turning something that seems completely useless into something truly valuable. Imagine taking a wild tree that most people would consider useless and transforming it into a tree that produces juicy, delicious food for the whole family. Today we will graft together this wild cherry tree that somehow managed to grow by itself between these rocks. Now we need to prepare the science. From my point of view, this is the most challenging part because I need to make a perfectly straight cut that will fit exactly into the spot I will prepare later in the rootstock. Next, I carefully peel back the protective layer of the bark to expose the cambium layer. I will do exactly the same steps for the second scion. I don't need to cut very deep because the thin cambium layer under the bark is what allows the graft to join successfully with the rootstock. I will make three vertical cuts and will separate the bark in order to make space for the science. As long as the rootstock is actively moving sap, the bark will lift out without much effort. When grafting, you need to choose how many buds to keep on the scion. If you keep too many buds, the rootstock may not have enough energy to support strong growth from all of them, leading to weak branches or poor development. On the other hand, if you leave only one bud, there is a higher risk of it getting damaged by wind, birds or other factors. I usually keep two or three buds on the scion. This gives a good balance. There are extra buds in case one gets damaged, but not so many that the rootstock can support them. Regardless of the technique used, the graft area must be tied and protected to prevent air or water from entering, otherwise the graft might fail. I like grafting onto trees that grew naturally in the ground right where the seed fell because its roots spread out freely without being cut or damaged. Since it already has a large established root system, its growth potential is incredible. As you can see, the graft has taken successfully and the sign is growing well. One of the scions didn't like its new spot and decided not to join the party. But that's okay, the rootstock's diameter is not that big, so two successful scions are more than enough for great results.
17 more days have passed and I came back to see how the grafts are developing. This spring has been colder and rainier than usual, so the growth was a bit slow. In the coming month, sunny weather is expected, so I'm looking forward to much better growth. Look at how much this branch has grown since the graft. The difference is incredible. That's the advantage of using an existing rootstock in your yard instead of planting a new tree from a pot. Because the root system is already established and full of energy, the graft takes off with explosive growth in spring when the sap is rising. To help it stay strong, I need to remove these suckers that are growing from the rootstock below the graft. By removing the suckers, all the strength of the rootstock goes directly into the graft, which helps it grow and heal faster. Once the graft has taken and the scion is growing well, it's time to remove the tape. You need to be careful and cut it gently so you don't damage the new growth. Removing the tape ensures the graft has room to grow without being constricted. This usually happens a few months after grafting. I removed the dead wood where the scion didn't take, letting the tree heal and form callus tissue naturally. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. I'll keep filming this tree over time and share updates when it starts producing fruit, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it.